I'm Sarah Ma. I'm a Hobart-based artist. My practice is cross-disciplinary. Mostly I work between printmaking, painting and miniature sculpture. For about the last decade, wilderness residencies have been fundamental in my practice. The major challenge and the major drive is the isolation and what that triggers. It puts me on an edge, which I think is the place where I need to create from. It's not always comfortable, but it's wonderful. It creates very permanent memories, very lasting memories. Yeah, very substantial things that you can take away with you. I go out walking, exploring and observing the geology of the place and weaving some sense of abstract kind of narrative into that. I collect small ephemeral things. They become the beginnings of my mappings which are on copper etched plates. My work has become miniature to the point where I'm using a magnifying glass to create. So I'm really loving that experience of being out in the wide open space and then coming to the very insular log cabin and creating these small worlds which really push you to that periphery of your senses. Two years ago I went to Matsaika Island, which is an isolated island off the bottom of Tasmania. Myself and my partner Peter were dropped off by a helicopter with all of our supplies and our food for the three months. There was no internet, no telephone, so we were very isolated in our art practice. My name's Peter Marsavan. I build my own pinhole cameras out of found objects. Whilst on the island, I managed to make three different cameras. So the main one was a lighthouse camera which uses four pinholes in around the outside of it to take a 360 degree image. I think the difference between the way Pete and I addressed the island was Pete was looking more out into the landscape whereas when I was going on walks I'd be examining all the small details of the island so looking at the lichens and finding little bird skulls and finding leaves and all these patterns that interest me aesthetically but also conceptually in terms of the life death and the decay and growth patterns that were happening on the island. Day to day life was pretty simple building the cameras each day and then when they were built I would sort of go out, wander the island, try and find little hidden parts of the island. Some days we couldn't leave the house because there'd be gale force winds. We'd see the most incredible sunsets I've ever seen in my life over the Southern Ocean. Every night was a spectacular show of sunsets and we'd go out in early in the morning at about 4am and watch mutton birds come in and so the sky would be black with mutton birds. So it was this really kind of really direct raw exposure to nature which then has a profound impact on you as a person and your artistic practice as well. In the last two years I've managed to do four exhibitions out of the work just from that cycle island. Everything's been new works for each exhibition and I've still got plenty stashed away from that I use down there. Residencies give you that opportunity to completely focus on your practice and have that dedicated time, which is invaluable. And I always find afterwards that I'm pushed as an artist and kind of take that next step up in my practice. And I think it's a really unique experience and we're lucky as artists to be able to go and experience a Tasmanian wilderness in that way and be supported by Arts Tasmania and by Parks.